Today on BRS TV we have the second episode of our How to Start a Saltwater Aquarium series. In this episode, Reed and I are going to go over some test kits as well as our, do our first water change, add a protein skimmer to the system, and some new livestock. Most people think owning a saltwater tank is really tough due to the testing that's involved. Uh, reality is it's a lot easier than most people think. Uh, we'll go out to the tank, I'll show you how to do the ammonia test. All right, the first test we want to go ahead and do is the ammonia test. Ammonia is produced by decaying fish food and fish waste. It is pretty toxic to just about anything in the aquarium. Uh, luckily, the bacteria that grows on our rock will eventually turn it into much less harmful nitrate. The process of building up bacteria on the rock is called cycling. Uh, we know our cycle is almost completed when the ammonia level reaches zero. At that point, we like to wait at least a couple weeks before adding anything else. Uh, this cycle process can take anywhere from three to six weeks, really depending on the tank and what's in it. So the next test kit we want to go over is the nitrate test kit. As Reed had mentioned, all of the ammonia eventually gets broken down by the bacteria in the tank into nitrate. Nitrate isn't very toxic in the tank at low levels. However, we do want to monitor because at high levels it can irritate fish and corals as well as feed algae growth. While it is possible to have a successful reef tank with slightly higher levels, I try to keep my nitrate levels as close to zero as possible. I generally test for the nitrate before I do my water changes. There's two basic ways to remove nitrate from the aquarium. One is with a water change where you're simply removing it with the water change. And the second one is with a protein skimmer which actually removes some of the fish waste and food before it has a chance to be broken down into nitrate. So we tested the tank and it looks like it's fully cycled. So we're going to go ahead and do our first water change. Last episode we went over how to mix salt water and how often to do water changes. So we won't get into that again. However, we'll show you how to do a water change. It's a lot easier than most people think. We like to do about 20% water change, being that this is a 40 gallon tank that's around 8 gallons. Uh, there's also some rock in there, so we're going to take that in consideration and take about 7.5 gallons out. It's about two of these 5 gallon buckets, 3 quarters of the way full. To get the water out of the tank, you can use a piece of tubing like this and start the siphon yourself. Otherwise, you can use a water changing system like Ryan has there. I personally prefer these water change systems much more than a siphon because I can hook it directly up to my sink and the attachment to the sink is going to start the siphon for me which means I don't have to put my mouth on that dirty hose and it's also going to send all the water directly down the sink so I'm not sloshing buckets all over the floor something that my wife absolutely hates. So I'm sure everyone knows how to use the tube in the bucket so we'll show you how to set up the water changing system. So the first step is just to remove the aerator from your faucet and replace it with the adapter that came with your kit. Should just screw right in, but if it doesn't, you can probably find a conversion adapter at your local hardware store. Then we'll screw on the suction faucet end of the kit. After we have this attached, when we turn on the cold water, you'll create a suction on this end of the hose and we can suck all the water out of the tank without creating a manual siphon. Uh, this makes sure that all the water is going to go directly down the drain rather on the floor. Let's go put this baby to work. So you can see as soon as I add this tube to the tank it's going to begin the suction and create that siphon we're looking for which will remove water from the tank. This is extremely convenient. We can also take this opportunity to go find some pockets down at the bottom where there's a lot of debris that has uh, settled out. Suck that up as well. So we just removed roughly about 20% of our aquarium water. I have two buckets of properly mixed salt water here. While you're pouring them in, just try and do it slowly so you're not blasting any of the tank inhabitants. So now that we've shown you how to remove some of the nitrate from the aquarium using water changes, it's time to show you how to remove some of that fish waste and uneaten food before it has a chance to break down into nitrite in the first place. We're going to do that using a protein skimmer here. So a protein skimmer is a pretty simple piece of equipment. Basically mixes large volumes of air with tank water to create a thick foam. Dissolved waste in the tank water can stick to the surface of those air bubbles within the foam, travel up through the skimmer and get collected in the collection cup. When we dump out the collection cup into the drain, it basically has removed all of the fish waste and fish food that has been collected in the cup before it has a chance to break down into nitrate to begin with. So since this tank doesn't have a sump, 
we're going to go ahead and install a hang on skimmer. Installation of these are pretty easy. Uh, it's just a matter of hanging it on the back of the tank, plugging it in, and the main, main thing you have to adjust is going to be the collection cup. It's uh, just a matter of adjusting it up or down as needed. We installed the skimmer on the front of the tank temporarily just so you can see how it works. As you can see, the collection cup isn't collecting a lot of foam yet. It is pretty common for a skimmer to require a break-in period of a week or two, so don't get too impatient with it. So next we're going to install our carbon reactor. Carbon's great for removing organics, toxins, and color pigments in the water. It's possible to get by by putting carbon in a filter bag such as this, but the much more efficient way to do it is running it through a reactor. I agree. Carbon has been part of pretty much every successful tank I've ever had up, and I do typically use it in a canister or a reactor like this one because it is so much more efficient than a filter bag. It's really important to me that the tank looks absolutely crystal clear. It's also important that we get maximum light penetration for the corals so that they get the light that they need to grow. Lastly, it's pretty much a knee-jerk reaction for me to change out the carbon anytime I suspect that there might be a toxin in the tank irritating any corals or livestock. So how did you want to install this reactor? Well, there's a couple of options with a reactor like this one. You can mount it on the wall beside or behind the tank. Personally, I don't like drilling holes in my wall. So I'm going to install it down here underneath the tank where it's out of sight. And then we'll just use these hoses to route the water back and forth. So you can see we've installed the reactor underneath the cabinet here and routed the hoses up to the top. So you can see we've added a couple of extra elbows at the top to route the cords nicely and there's a pump that is submerged which will feed our reactor for us. So before we go ahead and turn the pump on, I want to make sure that we get all the dusty fines out of the carbon so we don't flush them into the tank. With a canister like that, it's really easy to do. We're just going to take the return line and put it into a bucket or a jug like that. I'll turn the power of the pump on and we'll flush all the fines out into the jug and we'll just make sure that uh, we don't put the return line back in until the water starts to run clear. So now that we got our carbon reactor up and running, Reed, you want to tell everybody about how often you change out your carbon? There's a lot of different ways to use carbon and people have the different preferences. I personally like to use a small amount and change it out more frequently. Typically I do that whenever I do a water change every other week. I want to add one last thing about using carbon in a canister or reactor like this one. We absolutely don't want the carbon to be tumbling around in the cartridge or a canister because carbon is really soft and it can kind of grind itself to dust over time if it's allowed to tumble like that. So we always want to use a sponge or whatever is available in your equipment to make sure that the carbon is held in place and not allowed to tumble around. So the last thing we're going to do today is add a couple new fish to the aquarium. But first we want to acclimate them so they can get used to their new environment. There's a variety of ways to do this. We'll go over our favorite way to do it. Well, it's pretty simple. Um, we're just going to use three tools that pretty much everybody is going to have. And that's a five gallon bucket, a specimen container, and some airline tubing. So we'll need to uh, pour the fish into the specimen container. Go ahead. So now that we have our fish in the specimen container inside our five gallon bucket, we just need to slowly drip water from the tank into the container which will slowly change over the water in the container to tank water rather than the water that they came in. To do that, I'm going to use some airline tubing and I'm just going to tie a little knot around our leg of our light here so that it keeps the tube in the water. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to start this siphon manually. And it looks like we got uh, some running water coming out of it. This is probably too fast for acclimation, so what we'll do is just tie a little knot down here. And the tighter you pull the knot, the slower the drip will get. That looks about right to me. I'll go ahead and put it in here and probably within the hour the entire container will have changed over to water from our tank. 
So the water is completely turned over in the container now and there's one last step before we can add the fish. We want to make sure that the temperature inside the container is the exact same as the temperature of the water because temperature shock can have a pretty negative effect on our fish. So to do that, we'll just go ahead and hang the uh, specimen container off the side of the tank. So the final step in this is we want to make sure that we get absolutely none of the fish store water into our tank because you have no idea what might be in that water. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to uh, hold a net over our five gallon bucket and Reed will dump the fish in. And there we go. We have two uh, relatively happy fish swimming around in our tank. So that about wraps up today's episode. In episode three of our How to Start a Saltwater Aquarium series, we're going to add a hang-on refugium, a GFO reactor, as well as discuss uh, phosphate testing, and we're going to add a auto top-off system which will replace all of your evaporated water for you automatically. Thank you for watching Beer STV.